hello friends uh, i hope you all are doing great okay uh, this video is all about the zebra image i processed two days before uh, i got many personal messages asking how did i edit the image so uh, i decided to utilize this free time to make a video and one thing i should clarify that uh, this is not a tutorial uh, i'm not a master i'm not teaching any techniques here this video is all about uh, how i processed that one particular zebra image and uh, please uh, please bear with the audio quality uh, as i'm uh, recording the audio in my mac because i am not in the studio right now uh, so let's get started okay so from last two years i have been using lightroom uh, to process my wildlife and nature images uh, before two years uh, i was used to process my images in photoshop but uh, now my all images are being processed in lightroom uh, the reason being uh, lightroom is simple and less complicated than the photoshop this particular species is uh, gravy's zebra this is not a common zebra and uh, i have clicked this image in samburu national park kenya so Let's uh, go further with uh, the image processing. Okay, so the first thing I would like to do is uh, let's make it black and white and uh, crop a little bit. So after cropping, let's. Uh, adjust the exposure right now it is too bright for me okay, that's fine let's add some contrast little bit of texture and clarity mm, let's add some vignette So after this basic adjustment, uh, I would like to perform the very important thing, dodge. Dodging and burning is uh, basically a very crucial part of image processing. Uh, dodging means to brighten up certain areas of the image and burning means to darken uh, certain areas of the image. Uh, in Photoshop, uh, there are so many ways to perform dodging and burning, but in Lightroom, I generally use a radial filter to perform dodging and burning. So let's start with the dodging uh, with the help of radial filter in Lightroom. So after I am done with dodging, uh, the next very important thing is to give a faded look to the image, uh, which can be very easily done with the help of curves. So this is how I adjusted the values of curve for this image. Okay, let's come to the white and black points now. Uh, so as a standard protocol, we should always adjust our white points and black points at the very beginning of the image processing. But I always like to adjust or check my white points and black points at the end. Uh, I, I take it as a, you know, garnishing a food dish. Uh, after successfully preparing a dish, a chef garnish it at the end and make it look good and in some cases they try to hide some flaws as well uh, i hope you got my point okay okay so let's check uh, our white 
and black points uh, as you can see in the histogram there is a gap in the right hand side which represents whites and there is a gap in the left hand side also which represents blacks now by minimizing these gaps you can correctly adjust your white and black points basically uh, it adds contrast also okay guys uh, i hope you enjoyed the video uh, take care be safe bye